Hello, welcome to your 93rd SQL Server tutorial. My name is Johnny DeLuca and today I'm going to show you how to create a Windows based login using SQL Server Management Studio and I'll show you how to do the same with the T-SQL script. Um, I switched to using PowerPoint for this tutorial to make it look more concise and neatly presented some of the facts that you're going to want to retain. So after completing this tutorial and the following five tutorials that I will be posting soon, 94 through 98, you should be able to understand the SQL Server security model. You should be able to understand principles. You should be able to create SQL Server logins and users. You should be able to create user-defined server roles. You should be able to create database users. You should be able to create built-in database roles. And you should be able to configure a contained database. Now, no matter if you work for, say, a university or a bank or a retail store, securing data is always a DBA's top priority. Who can access the data, what data they can access, and how to access the data are often main topics of conversation inside and outside an IT department. Now, data access needs will vary across applications, departments, and individuals, but the underlying requirement of governing permissions persists for every aspect of the data. And SQL Server 2012 provides a really nice, robust security structure that allows DBA to control access from the server down to a specific object within the database. For example, a DBA could be given server-level permission without being granted any data-level access, or an application or individual could be given access to a database or database objects without being granted any server-level permission. Uh, the topic of SQL Server Security could easily fill an entire book itself because there's just so many items and facets to consider. And uh, the following are just a few questions that should be asked and addressed with regards to SQL Server Security. And I have them outlined here. We have, should SQL Server be network accessible? What port should SQL Server use? Who has access to backup files? Who can interactively log on to SQL Server? How should the SQL Server files be secured? And how should SQL Server encryption keys and backups be configured and maintained? Now, most of these questions are well beyond the scope of this tutorial and the few that follow. And as a result, this tutorial and the next uh, three or four focus primarily on instance level and data level access. These next few tutorials, uh, more limited focus is not meant to discount the importance of addressing the other questions and considerations regarding SQL Server Security, though. So, anyway, so now on to our next slide here. So, we're going to talk about principles, all right? Understanding principles. A principle is an entity that has access to SQL Server resources. There are generally three levels of principles, Windows, SQL Server, and Database. And I'll do a little explaining here. A Windows account or group, whether local to the server or from Active Directory, can be a principle. A Windows principle can be granted access to a SQL Server instance as a Windows authenticated login. Active Directory can then handle activation or deactivation, password policy, and security workflows. As in Alternative to Active Directory, SQL Server can handle authentication itself with SQL Server logins where activation, deactivation, and security workflows must be handled by a DBA inside of SQL Server. You can, however, enforce Active Directory, directory policy on a SQL Server login by specifying an option, as I'll be explaining at, in a later tutorial. Now, you must have enabled mixed mode authentication on the server for SQL Server authentication. Um, in previous releases of SQL Server, server logins mapped to database users. Logins handled authentication and server level permissions. However, with the release of SQL Server 2012, an alternative connection method is available 
with the concept of contained databases, which I'll be discussing in a later tutorial. Now, depending on the selected authentication mode, which uh, you can find various tutorials that go into more uh, detail about mixed mode and Windows authentication and whatnot, uh, depending on the selected authentication mode, you may or may not be able to create SQL Server principles. You must have configured mixed mode authentication to do this. And finally, for databases, you will have a user or a role. And something to note, I kind of, I think, briefly touched on this. In earlier releases of SQL Server, you must have already created a SQL Server login before a database user could be created. But with the release of SQL Server 2012, the procedure has changed with the concept of contained databases, which, like I said, uh, that's what I touched on. I'll be touching on that in a later tutorial. We'll dive into contained databases. Now, all right. So, now that we have gone over that, let's take a look at how to create a Windows-based login using SQL Server Management Studio. Okay, now, a login is a security principle that is based on a Windows group or account. In addition, a login can be an account that is created on SQL Server. Uh, server level permissions such as create database or backup database can be granted to logins. And if a login needs to access a database, it must be mapped to a database user. Um, and I'll be getting into more discussion uh, either in this tutorial or the next about creating database users. Um, by default, the SA login principle is created when SQL Server is installed, but if you did not configure mixed mode authentication, the account will be disabled. The SA account is an administrator account that has access to every SQL Server resource. And as a best practice, you're going to want to probably avoid sharing the password for this account and ensure that the password is changed on a regular or semi-regular basis. Okay? So, now, let's dive in. So, first to start, go ahead and pull uh, Management Studio up. And connect to a server and then open the Object Explorer if it's not. Expand the server tree. We're going to right-click the Security folder right here. Boom. And then we're going to go ahead and click on New, and we're going to click on Login. Now, you must have an existing Windows account created in Active Directory on your local machine to continue. For instance, uh, right here, I am admin L505 and if I want, uh, and slash admin. So if I went ahead and created that, again, it'll say error. Um, this has already been created. Um, so if you're not on a domain, what you're going to want to do before we proceed is create a guest user account in Windows. So I can show you how to do that real fast. So I'm using Windows 7. This is going to be somewhat similar just depending on what version of Windows you are in. And you are going to want to go to Control Panel. And then you are going to want to go to to user account right over here. And then we're going to go over here to manage another account. And as you can see, I've already created a couple other ones. I created standard user and standard user 2. Um, you're going to want to create, uh, click on create a new account. And you can choose to make it an administrator or standard user. I suggest make it a standard user since you probably already are the administrator. I'm not going to because I already have. But you're just going to name it and uh, press create account. Simple as that. Okay. I can get out of here now. Now, I'm going to show you. Uh, we're going to name it. We have to... Take our server name, mine's admin L505. Okay. Here we go, and then we do the uh, backslash and then standard user. Okay, and then you're going to do the same, whatever your server name is, backslash, 
whatever you name your account. Um, since we're using Windows-based authentication, uh, we're going to obviously ensure that that's checked. Uh, if this was a SQL Server login, you would select the SQL Server authentication option. And with this option selected, a password must be entered and confirmed using the password and confirm password text boxes. And as you can see, if I click this, these come alive. I'm going to talk about these. Um, you have the choice to enforce Windows Active Directory. Uh, password policies and password expiration policies on this account by selecting the enforce password policy and enforce password expiration checkboxes and this means that whatever policies have been configured for passwords and password expirations by your Active Directory Administrator which might be you will be enforced for this SQL Server login and then finally, you can specify that the password must be changed when the account is initially used by selecting the user must change password at next login option. For now, we're just going to ensure that the Windows authentication option is selected. And we're going to leave the next option, map to certificate and map to asymmetric key, clear. You can only select only one or the other anyway. Um, something to note. Certificates and asymmetric keys are specific to encryption, and you can learn more about these by just doing a Google search or SQL Server books online. Okay, now moving forward uh, a little bit more. Um, selecting the map to credential checkbox right here uh, allows you to map this login to the credential of another account. This option allows the SQL Server login to access resources external to SQL Server under the context of the login specified in the credential. For now though, leave this box clear. Um, when creating an account that will have database level access, you should specify a default database using the default database drop down, database, database, I believe it's right here. Okay. And I have it on master for now. Uh, when first authenticated to the SQL Server instance, a new connection will be in the default database's context. For example, if a new query window is opened by SQL Server Management Studio, the current database displayed will be the default database. If this is a login that will be used for data access, as a best practice, you're going to always want to select a user-created database and not a system database. Assume the person who owns this account will be the DBA for this instance, so the default database can remain master and it will remain master for the tutorial. The final drop down to default language uh, by default uses the default language configured on the server. So for us, that's English. For, for me, that's English. I don't know about you guys watching. But as an alternative, you can select a language. A different language but for the purposes of this exercise we're going to use default as you can see there's quite a lot to choose from okay alrighty moving right along we're going to go over here and now go through our select the pane pages up here so let's go check out server roles um, a list of built-in server roles is displayed on this page as you can clearly see the public role is selected by default right here uh, excuse me. a description of each server role is provided or I will be providing a description of each server role in a later tutorial um, in the next few tutorials but for now the box next to system admin server role which allows the system administrator to execute any task against the server right here. We're going to want to go ahead and check that guy. Alright. Pretty cool. Now we're going to go over to user mapping. Okay. And let's talk about this a little bit. Uh, if you want to explicitly grant this user access to a specific database, you can select that database from the list displayed at the top of the page. Uh, additionally, you can assign the user to built-in database roles, and I will be discussing in another tutorial uh, 
within these next five or so, I will be getting into uh, creating database users more in depth. But for now, we're not going to select anything right here. Uh, something to note, the system admin role has unrestricted permissions to all databases without the need to create database users. Therefore, you're going to really want to think carefully before adding anyone to this role. could get you into some trouble. All right. Now, uh, under securables right here, let's talk about this guy. Um, this page lists items that can be secured and their corresponding permissions or the permissions that can be assigned to that login. Um, security is typically set at the server or database level. However, SQL Server provides you with the ability to set a much finer level of security. Um, if we click on, click on this search button, it will show us some options here. What objects do you wish to add? Specific objects? All objects of this type or a server, that's this server, admin L505. Um, and you can add access to specific server level level items. So you can provide access to every item by choosing the server, my, you know, boom, right here. And this is my server. That would be different, obviously, for your machine. Um, if you select the specific object option, you can add items of different types. You select all objects of the types option. You can holistically grant grant permissions to all objects of a specific type. But we're just going to click cancel. I just want to show you that so you can be aware. Now, back here, we're going to status. Okay. Um, on this page, you have the ability to grant or deny the login permission to connect to the server. We're going to want to make sure that grant option is selected, which it is, and we're going to want to ensure that the enabled option is selected. Okay, we're good to go. Now, finally, if this was a SQL Server account, you could lock out the account just as you can with Active Directory, but this isn't. This is a Windows, so we're going to click OK button, um, and then our login is going to be created. All right, now. How can we tell if it was created or not? I'll show you. Click here, and then we expand this login folder, and boom, standard user. I, that's the one we just did. Pretty cool. So you now know how to create a Windows-based login using SQL Server Management Studio. Congratulations. Now I'll show you what the script looks like for if you wanted to do the same thing with two SQL. I have that guy right over here. Okay, so this would be the database we'd be using. And just as I had outlined when we went through the stages in Management Studio, that's my server, admin L505, and that's the standard user. I did one, so if I wanted to go back to the control panel and create another user, which I did actually, standard user 2. But we would just go ahead and paste this in, our query editor, and hit execute. Now, this is a Windows-based login. Now, I've been talking about SQL-based login. If we wanted to go ahead and execute a key SQL script that would be a SQL-based login, we would use this script here. And we see use master create login standard user too. And remember, we have to have a password when we use um, the SQL login. So these are really handy. You would just have to remember to change the, uh, the corresponding server name and account name to match yours. But go ahead and I would copy this down and save this because you could definitely use it at a later time. And that does it for this tutorial. In my next tutorial, we are going to start diving into creating user defined server roles and some other really cool stuff. So I look forward to seeing you there. Thanks for checking this out. Bye.